YouTube, what the crap's going on? Era of Carthage here. I got a Total War Rome 2 replay for you, and I hope you're excited. I know there's some of you out there who love this, so I'm happy to bring it to you. And I got a replay I couldn't refuse, which was Macedon versus Carthage. Unfortunate that uh, pikes are so crappy in this game, because I, I love like seeing Macedon use pikes. But let's see what Macedon has brought. Macedon is not a very good faction. Carthage is not a great faction. The two of them should combine to make things interesting. Uh, let's take a look at the armies. Um, I see a unit of archers on either flank, a center of shield bearers, which is actually a pretty strong charge and a very high defense and armor hoplite unit. And that's where the general is too, so four shield bearers, my bad. There's a couple of Thracian warriors behind. This is actually kind of a cool idea because you could combine their charge with the armored hoplites. A couple of four Thessalian cavalry for defense, and then it looks like a thorax sword on either flank. Sorry, no royal peltus. I don't know who the guy is, I can't remember, but I got I got a major royal peltus fan on my channel, so I know that this Macedon player is already screwed up in your book. Alright, so Carthaginian hoplites, Libyan infantry. General's bodyguard, Libyan infantry. So let's see, in terms of cavalry, there's a Carthaginian cavalry here. I see a Libyan peltist. So several units of Libyan peltist. Maybe for helping to bring down Macedonian cavalry. Otherwise, it's a Carthaginian hoplite build. Yeah, a couple of Carthaginian cab, four in total. Three Libyan peltist, maybe four, no, four Libyan peltist, my bad, sorry. In the Libyan infantry, and they are backed up by some uh, mercenary Gallic warriors. So it should be an interesting build. I mean, in terms of just sheer infantry power, Macedon's looking better because the four shield bearers, that's a significant um, investment into the infantry of Macedon. Now, on the flanks, though, militia hoplites will fail against uh, Carthaginian hoplites, but they should be able to hold out. And there's also thorax swords for um, support. The cavalry advantage is in favor of Macedon, in my opinion, unless Carthage can somehow get support from maybe some of the Peltist units or something. Because Macedon, the Thessalian cavalry is a heavy shot cavalry and they have a superior charge. Carthaginian cavalry is medium cavalry, better in prolonged melee, but it's uh, probably going to get crunched on the charge if it goes straight up against Thessalians. Okay, so the two armies squaring up. It looks like the Carthaginian army may be trying to do some outflanking, but since everybody's all spaghettied up here, the outflanking takes so long that, I mean, neither player is really going to gain any type of advantage, I don't think, from this maneuvering, but maybe. Looks like the Macedonian player is falling back, hoping not to get overwhelmed over here by the Carthaginian, because that, that's what the Carthaginian was looking to do, was put extra pressure on this flank. This is the downside of spaghetti lines is that they are slow to move. Here the Thessalian cavalry is trying to actually capitalize on some of the spaghetti formation by running a charge. And they're able to do so uh, quite successfully. I mean, they've taken away a lot of the hit points and only lost one, one unit. But, I mean, not a lot of kills on the first charge. There's usually not, especially from a well-armored heavy infantry. But it did dish a lot of hit point damage for sure. We just don't get to see that because the way that Rome 2's system worked here wasn't like Warhammer where you could actually see the hit points dropping. Which is actually a really nice addition. Mercenary Thracian Warriors will get a really good charge on the Libyan infantry. But then the Libyan infantry are likely to turn around and tank that out. But the charge will be devastating. Carthaginian cavalry chasing out the Thessalian cavalry here. And then there's more uh, Thessalian cavalry coming forward, looking to maybe rear charge these Hoplites. And here, shield bearers and Thessalian cavalry chasing away the Carthaginian cavalry, and they've caught it here. But there are Libyan Peltists nearby to support, so it could be dangerous for the Macedonian cavalry because javelins have an anti cavalry bonus. But they managed to pull away nicely, and the shield bearers enter combat, and the shield bearers are going to absolutely stomp the Libyan infantry. And the Thracians are going to take a second charge. Good idea. Yeah, in the center, the shield bearers winning out a clear victory. And here they're going to even go into the hoplite wall formation, which will give them extra melee defense. So the shield bearers easily winning the melee fight so far. And the Thessalian cavalry being used to harass Carthaginian units. In this case, the mercenary Gallic warriors, and they will get curb stomped by the, uh, the shield bearers. These shield bearers here are taking down Carthaginian Hoplites. Already 61 kills from previous combat, but Carthage is pushing past, and Macedon wants to uh, kind of let them come and give them a little bit of that flank. 
There are uh, support cavalry all over the battlefield here. Thracian warriors here. Got a nice charge there. 25 kills, helping to more quickly take down the Carthaginian Hoplites, who are wavering. And so far, the Libyan Peltas just haven't been able to get a hold of their main quarry here, which is the Thessalian cavalry, in my opinion. The Carthaginian cavalry is kind of almost sitting back, either out of mistake or fear. But the Thessalian cavalry is not pushing right here either. The Carthaginian cavalry dismounted. I think maybe they clicked the wrong button, so their horses have dispersed at this point. <laughs> so the Carthaginian cavalry is going to spend the rest of the battle dismounted, so it'll kind of be similar to a, a light or a, a medium spear unit. Interesting. Yes, I think that was probably a mistake. I've actually done that before too. I've accidentally clicked the dismount button. Look at that. Charged through the back of their own shield bearers. <laughs> So yeah, the Thessalian cavalry there lost the charge. Not going to be super effective. The shield bears, or those are just militia hoplites. My bad. I was going to be surprised if shield bears were actually losing that combat. These ones though are surrounded, but they'll still hold out pretty strong. They may lose, but it'll take them forever to lose if they lose. Uh, one of the big differences on the shield bears is that they're, uh, I believe, their armor piercing damage. Uh, it's five. So it's not the it's not the best that you can get for a hoplite, but it's it's uh, pretty decent. You see the same weapon damage for the Carthaginian hoplites, though, but the shield bears have a higher uh, hit point. Thessalian cavalry coming to defend the archers here. Carthaginian cavalry on this flank now making its presence felt. So all the Carthaginian cavalry has come up from the fight. These two dismounted ones. As you come on. Interesting. Yeah, they're not going to do good against thorax swords. They might be able to hold for a moment, but not going to do well. So they're going to be used to hold the Thorax Swords who are attacking the Libyan Peltas. It looks like the Libyan Peltas are going to fall back. These Shield Bearers are still tanking it out over here, so it looks like the Carthaginian is going to free up one infantry and bring it around. But Macedon is slowly but surely chewing its way through the uh, Carthaginian infantry, and the Carthaginian infantry is just not doing enough to stop these shield bearers. Look, 145 kills on that one. 76 kills on the thorax uh, swords. 66 kills on the general. So yeah, Carthage is uh, just being overwhelmed by the elite infantry of Macedonia in this case. The shield bearers um, are a good unit. Carthage has their own elite hapote unit, but you just don't see them on the field very often. It's the sacred band. They never quite got balanced in very well, whereas shield bearers actually can be useful. In some situations, you'll rarely see Sacred Band used because they really aren't super useful for their cost. But I like the combination of arms here between the Thessalians and the Hoplites. And fairly light on the archers. Looks like they're going to use them here. Yep, yeah, the flaming uh, flaming arrows doing some morale damage there. Nice, nice job. Took some of the Carthaginian Hoplites out of the fight there. So nice use of the flaming missiles. So at this point, Macedon is definitely just giving Carthage a proper beat down. Another um, Libyan infantry here that would be prone to the fire arrows. But these uh, yep, there comes the fire here. I'm gonna try and take down the morale of the Carthaginian cavalry. But the Thessalian cavalry is likely to suffer more from that right there. The first shot from the fire arrows was better, I think. Now they're just gonna fire in, but the Carthaginian cavalry is probably about to silence these archers. There's not much the Macedonian player can do but run. Which will just delay the inevitable. Oh no, they've got a Thessalian cavalry for support that I didn't see behind it. Nice job though by the Carthaginian baiting the charge away and then intercepting with this cavalry instead. And then swinging back around because the Thessalian cavalry charge would have been a bit devastating. There are shield bearers coming in to support though, so the Carthaginian cavalry will lose this fight regardless. And Carthaginian cav is decent medium melee cav. It's not spectacular. It's decent. Militia hot fights have done pretty well for themselves. These Thracian warriors right here. Holy kills, Batman. 161 kills on a Thracian warrior mercenary. That is fantastic. Macedon made some great use of their infantry here. Cycle, cycling in the Thracian warriors for charge. Very patient play with the Thessalian cavalry, not getting overly aggressive The Carthage, but you know, fighting in the right moments. And Carthage here is going to be soundly defeated by the Macedonian army. I'm about half well, I mean, they do have the shock cavalry, which would stop some elephants from Carthage could have been potentially interesting, but then it would have just taken more money away from their infantry. 
And I guess the heavy shock cavalry probably could help stop the elephants. There were two archers, which also could have done it. I don't know. Interesting build there from both players. As I uh, in the replay, let's take a look at the kills. So thanks, Bobby and um, or Bobby, however you pronounce it, and then more here um, for a fun game in terms of Mastodon versus Carthage. I'm trying to remind myself. Let's go look at the custom battle. So when I look, man, it's been so long since I've spent time in Rome 2 that I'm more of a commentator than a player, obviously, at this point. I'm trying to remind myself of the Sacred Band unit info. So they still have the 29 damage spear, 42 attack, only 22 charge bonus. And if I compare them up against Macedon, let's grab some shield bearers. Oops. What the? Oh. I'm messing with it like it's Warhammer. So 1160. Basically the same attack and weapon damage, bonus versus large, but a better charge bonus. Let's look at melee defense. Uh, melee defense is slightly better for the um, Sacred Band, but look, only 105 armor compared to the 115 on the Shield Bear. And then base health is 65 and 70. So better armor, basically all the same stats. And if you look at the cost, it's 1160 versus 1170. So not a huge cost difference, but definitely a better unit for the price, which is probably why you'd be more likely. And that that charge bonus is a big deal, the difference in charge bonus is, because having that extra charge bonus will help this unit on the, you know, not suffer as badly to other units in the charge. Hoplites are kind of a slow killing unit because of their weapon damage, um, but they have really good defense and armor, and they rely on that. So having the extra charge helps them get a little more work done in the beginning of the combat, which can be very handy in actually winning the combat. So... Expert charge defense. I'm assuming that these ones have the same thing. Yeah, expert charge defense. Resistant to heat. Interesting. I'm guessing the shield bearers do not have such. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. Appreciate the players who sent it in. Hope you enjoyed some uh, Total War Rome 2. Appreciate MSI for sponsoring my channel. Uh, make sure and check the description. Um, uh, there will be a link there where they're doing a giveaway for uh, AMD AM4 socket motherboard, I believe. Um, so they're going to give away lots of motherboards. You should definitely go check out the link. It's something I'm involved in. So I'll be telling you more about um, Ryzen and AMD and kind of the way that you could use such things. Um, because of MSI's help, I'll be showing you how you can do an AMD build uh, for a Total War computer if you're interested. It should be great for folks who are new to Total War or just want to do their first time build. I'm going to be focused on uh, building a, a budget build that gets you a lot of performance for the cost. Um, as opposed to my rig, which is extremely expensive and very premium. Uh, so I wanted to do some work on building computers that might help those who are kind of looking for a more uh, normal approach and not complete overkill like the system I use. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed this one. If you want to subscribe, click my, uh, my logo down in the bottom right-hand corner. It'll keep you up to date with the videos. But if not, and if so, I will see you next time in the battlefields of Total War Rome 2.